Another Cardano news update for you all. I'm Petty Bui. If this is your first time here, hit that like button, click the subscribe and click that notification bell. I'll keep you up to date with everything that is happening in the Cardano ecosystem. This week, I'll be going through a lot of things around stake pools and a couple of initiatives that we're trying to do in regards to upgrading these nodes out there. So if you're a state pool operator and you're listening to this, please take note, it is time to upgrade your state pools to the latest version 8.9. We'll go through that in a moment and also look at Mithril. Make sure you become a Mithril signer. A lot of benefits there to speed up various aspects of the Cardano ecosystem. But first off, before we get into all that, this is a reminder that there are these scams out there. As people, there is a scammer sending out these ADA Oz tokens, my state pool, does not have a token. If you see this appear in your wallet, just be aware that it's a scam. You can send this to an exchange. I've got an article here by Stephanie from Lido Nation and she wrote a really good piece about what these scam tokens are, what's happening and how to get rid of them as well. So check that out, links down below for you all so you can find out how to get rid of this and reclaim your ADA. Now this first news item here is around Mithril signers. So we have now 148 unique state pool operators with 4.5 billion ADA delegated to those pools now becoming Mithril signers. Now you may be asking what on earth is a Mithril signer and do I need to be worried about this? Do I need to even consider what it is? And let me just go through what it is. There's this really good article here on flagship.fyi. Essentially, Mithril is a protocol designed to help scale Cardano network. It's lightweight, efficient, and secure without needing to access the full current state. Now, if you're using Daedalus, a full node wallet, to be able to sync that, you have to download the entire chain. I think it's around 170 gig at the moment. So it's a, it's a fair chunk to download. Now this article does go through the details of how all Mithril works, but I love how they just break it down quite simply here. Think of Mithril as a turbocharger for your Cardano network. It operates alongside the main blockchain run by SPOs and produces a state-based snapshot of, your, of the blockchain. Why do we need this snapshot? So applications constantly know the status of the blockchain. The faster they can do this, the faster applications run. Now for me, if I was to set up a brand new node, it will take me about a day to a day and a half to actually sync the entire node and get all that data down. But with Mithril, it cuts it down to a matter of maybe 10 minutes, which makes it so much faster to sync the blockchain and have a copy on your local network. So it's hugely beneficial. Here in this article, time to bootstrap a Cardano node has been reduced to under 20 minutes. And I can verify that for certain because I've done this myself. So applications and use cases, light wallets. Wallets don't require additional trust assumptions. Fast bootstrapping of full nodes, drastically reducing the time it takes to set up a full Cardano node. Efficient voting system, enhancing the security and efficiency of blockchain-based voting systems. So there's a lot of benefits here and I don't see many downsides to this, especially with how easy it is to set up a Mithril signer. So if you are a state pool operator and you want to get your node set up with Mithril and all working properly, I'll put links down below. I didn't update last video as well about this, but I'll put the references in this one so that you can get up to date and become a Mithril signer too. If you want to look at all the state pools that are Mithril signers at the moment, you can go to this website here, Adastat, and you do need to filter here. You just click on the little filter and you can click on Mithril signers only. And this will give you a list of all the Mithril signers. Let me just hit save. And you can see all these pools here. Uh, there's our pool, Ada Oz, uh, officially a Mithril signer too. So if you want to find out who is a Mithril signer and maybe you want to delegate to them as well, you can check out this list. You can find many, many state pools here, the 140 or so pools that are now Mithril signers. This post here by Andrew Westberg is a push to get node operators to upgrade to 8.9.0. At the moment, it's at 22%. You check out the live stats at pooltool.io. You can see that's gone up. Uh, last I looked was 23. So now it's gone to 25%. So it is shifting and I'll be changing over my nodes in just a moment after this to get up to that 8.9. But if you have a look at some of the changes here, this, this one was quite interesting and I didn't know about this. And this is to do with uh, future blocks. Here we go. So I can only recommend all SPOs upgrade to Cardano node 8.9.0. It is beautiful to see the issue subpar handling of blocks from the future 
finally fixed. For the first time, we won a height battle against a block from the future. Notice the negative timestamp. So some of these blocks are being minted before they are supposed to be minted. So this pool here, Hodler, uh, has been minting blocks continuously before they were supposed to mint the blocks. Um, I, I don't understand the issue with this or the technicalities behind how it works. But if you look up this issue here, 4251, you'll be able to get the details and uh, see how it's being made. But they're creating a block in the future. One node is reporting it, which is themselves and pushing it out to the chain. And if you are a, a SBO that is producing a block around the time of this one here, you can see the slot times uh, are slightly different it means that you will lose out. So, so it's very hard to fight against that. But this latest version 8.9.0 fixes this particular issue. Now I did have a look at Hod Hodler Pool to see what's going on. And I, was, I saw this post from Holger. So Holger is one of those SPOs out there that is uh, one, one of those that helps all the other state pool operators out there. It's a very good state pool operator. If you ever want a pool to delegate to, look for Kadana24. Uh, he's definitely a really good state pool operator. But here he's looking into the Hodler, Hodler pools. They've got two pools and uh, their pools are because of the misconfiguration uh, causing other pools to lose their blocks. But this, this last one here that they did this new bit of misconfiguration, uh, set their pledge to 75 million. So if you don't have that amount of pledge, that amount of ADA within the state pool's wallet, uh, you won't be able to mint any blocks. So all of the delegates, the 3,528 of them that is delegating to this pool will not get any rewards whatsoever. So if your pledge is not met, it means you won't get those rewards. Now I did look into this to verify the information as well. So I went to Cardano scan, search for Hodler. I can see there are two pools here and you can see the pool here with the pledge 75 million. So let's just have a quick look at that one and see what's going on. And we can see the committed pledge 7.5 million, active pledge uh, 7.5. So it looks like to me that there is, is definitely a decimal place issue here when they're uh, updating the metadata of the pool. They're supposed to write uh, 7.5 million as opposed to 75 million. Now to verify that I did look at the pool updates here. So these are the transactions for any of the pool configuration changes that you can see. And you can see in the last epoch for 74, they did have that pledge at 75 million, but then they realized and fixed it to 7.5. So anyone that's delegating to this pool will lose out on their rewards for one epoch, but it will go back to normal the following epoch. So it pays to have a look at what your state pool operators are doing. If you want to get alerts about all this stuff here, all these parameter changes, you can actually go to pooltool.io. You can sign up for an account, like sign in here, register for an account, and then you can have a, a setup on your mobile device, on their mobile app, to give you notifications anytime your pool changes their parameters. So if they change their pledge, if they change their margin fees, whatever it might be, you can see that change and then you can then decide what to do with your delegation afterwards. So it's a really nice tool to have. And especially with this pool here, you can see uh, the margin change over the years. They were at 1.15 um, uh, earlier on. So this was at, in Epoch 443. But over the previous uh, few epochs, over the last uh, half a year or so, they've been changing their margin, increasing it there. But they also have a very high in comparison cost as well. So that's a 500 ADA that they pocket from all the rewards of the delegates. And then they take a further 2.15% on top of that. So it's quite a bit of ADA that they take in terms of uh, pool rewards uh, away from their delegates. So have a look at what your pool is doing. There is usually an average, the uh, margin, uh, the, the most common one that you see is around 1% and the average cost is the default one, which is 340 ADA. So have a look at what your pool is doing and make a decision based on their parameters uh, to best optimize your awards out there. One of the other benefits of upgrading to 8.9 is also this lowering of the CPU usage. This is incredible. Have a look at this. You can see the node here, it's quite high. It's averaging over 100%, maybe 130% on the average there. Do I have an average? No, not really. But then after that, after the upgrade, you can see here Starforge upgrade afterwards, and that is maybe 20 or 30%. And so that's a huge difference. 
So that's really cool to see that it's being optimized in so many ways. We've fixed errors in regards to the future blocks, but then also the optimization of CPU usage in this version. So I highly recommend that SPOs get out there and upgrade their pools. Uh, we also had verification from other pools as well. So you can see here, high CPU usage, over 40% there, definitely over 40%, just under, and then drops down to almost nothing afterwards. So really good to see. Um, I, I can't wait to actually finish upgrading so we can get these kind of benefits as well. In other news, T-1 have launched their test net. So this is the launch pad that the T-1 team have been promising. Their test net is up and running now. So you can play around with this and see what it's all like. I did have a look into it. They have some test data there at the moment. So you can have a look at how the platform would work. This is all running on pre-prod. I have my pre-prod uh, wallet connected here at the moment as well. So have a play. Have a, have a look at how the pre-sales work on this, how the sales work, and how you can actually mint your own token and launch your own token within their platform. It's done in a completely decentralized way, all with smart contracts, so anyone can go through and uh, create their own token. It's got some really interesting mechanisms in there where you can go through and launch your token if you're under a certain threshold, or if you're going for a higher amount of a raise, you can use their platform with a full KYC process behind it as well. So they've got different things that they can handle and it's all done in a legal way, which is really, really cool. This news update here is from Optum Finance. And last week we spoke about their rebrand and their repositioning in the Cardano ecosystem. And this article here talks deeply about OADA and why it's needed for the Cardano ecosystem. You can go through the article here. It is a lengthy read to go through and find out exactly why we need this. But in short here, to put things in perspective of the 22.75 billion ADA currently staked, it would only take low single digit percentage to be minted into OADA to immediately double Cardano's total value lock. That's that's incredible. So it's a, it's a lot of ADA at the moment in the Cardano ecosystem is just staked in liquid staking, people like that, people are comfortable with that, and people aren't moving into the DeFi space yet or still. They are very comfortable in that uh, liquid staking phase. So eventually we'll see rewards for staking slowly diminish. So at the moment, when I first started the state pool, we, we, we saw rewards around that 4.2, 4.5%, but it's already dropped 1% in the three years that I've operated a pool. So now it's at that uh, 32 3.5%, and eventually it will drop even further as there's more ADA in the ecosystem. So this, this whole OADA idea and concept will help try and boost those staking rewards, especially for those users that don't want to participate in DeFi in particular, but will want to try and get those rewards up. So I know a lot of people that bought a lot of ADA and are trying to retire off that amount of ADA in terms of the um, ADA rewards. So boosted um, uh, rewards like this, where you can create OADA and stake OADA, I think it's S OADA, I think it was, uh, you'll be able to do so. Now, I also love this comment down here. Sorry, I don't get this yet. You said that OADA would be more likely to be locked into DeFi than normal ADA, thus increasing TVL, why? As staking rates fall to a negative level, lots of holders used to staking want a passive ADA yield product, no CDP management, no farming, other tokens, something very simple. So, and, and I totally agree with that. Collateralized debt positions such as uh, synthetic assets, uh, where you have to monitor and make sure your debt position is healthy, a lot of work, too hard for a lot of people. Uh, farming, farming tokens, providing liquidity, you have impermanent loss, you have uh, all these other aspects, you, um, you need to set up um, infrastructure. Again, too hard for a lot of people. This, where you're putting it to a smart contract and creating that OADA and the stake OADA, splitting it out to two different things, simple, it is simple. Just create that uh, new asset within the smart contract and then still earn your staking rewards. So I, I love the idea and everything that Optum are doing in this case. So hopefully we see this one come into the ecosystem soon and we'll see how this one all plays out. But I'm also looking forward to the increase of TVL because as soon as that ADA leaves the liquid staking goes into a smart contract, it's also counted in DeFi Llama's stats and we can see that TVL rise. Good work, Optum Finance. 
Smart Places and Fluid Tokens, this partnership just makes sense. So Smart Places have all those land plots within their world where it will interact with a mobile device and you can uh, have that whole social fi experience. Now, a lot of those land plots can be rented out and other people can use them for whatever it might be. And Fluid Tokens, perfect partnership there. They have the whole platform where you can rent out your uh, particular land plots to someone else for a certain period of time. Uh, the person that is lending it out will earn a little bit of ADA, if, especially if they don't know what to do with it. And the person that is renting it can get it for real cheap, have an event on there, uh, maybe it's some social thing, uh, and then be able to uh, get rid of it afterwards by returning it to the user and pay that minimal fee. So it makes sense. <laughs> it's a perfect partnership here. Now, if you want to learn more about Smart Places and what they're doing, I did an interview with Bjorn talking all about the platform here. So you can check out this interview uh, that only went up just yesterday and learn more about Smart Places and their upcoming uh, LBE on MinSwap, their liquidity bootstrapping event, and also uh, their upcoming mobile app when they're ready to launch it. So they're getting to that point where it's almost time and it's gonna be really interesting to see what we can do with this. I think with a lot of the events that we'll be holding in Brisbane here, or lots of meetups and in Sydney uh, this year, I'll try and get some of these land plots close to where the venues are so we can have that interactive SoFi experience uh, through the land plot. So pretty exciting to see, and I can't wait for the mobile app to be released. Now looking into USDM, over the last week, we have seen more liquidity come into the ecosystem and we have a more stable stablecoin. It's hovering around the one USD mark, which is really good to see <laughs> after that massive spike there where people were trading it for over $3 USD, over $3. That's incredible, guys. What's wrong with you? So someone may have paid 3.1 for one USD. Uh, then as soon as that liquidity came in, bam, bam, they took it back down to that uh, one USD mark and someone took a lot of profit off the top. So <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, be careful with what you do there, guys. But we can see that the stable coin is pretty much stable. It's hovering around that one uh, USD mark, which is really, really good to see. Now, in terms of inflows into the USDM ecosystem, the stablecoin for Cardano, you can check out all the stats on Charlie3, the Oracle that they're using. Um, I have to say they did a really good job of this developer portal. I, I do like it and the design, the layouts, all the information, it's, it's just really easy to consume. So um, big thumbs up to the C3 team. Uh, good on you there. But you can see here the amount of USD that's inflowing into the ecosystem. And as of, I think this was last Friday here, hasn't gone up at all um, since uh, the weekend. It's Tuesday today. So we may see a little bit more come in uh, after today, uh, after some money's uh, flowed into the uh, bank accounts of USDM there. Uh, but you can see just over that 100,000 USD by the end of the week. So I suspect they knew that how much was going to come in, but we, we can see the amount come in there now. And that's all from uh, larger investors, larger institutional investors. Uh, but we will see, I believe now Hosky, Put out a post Hosky token. Uh, I believe they have a little bit of liquidity there to add into and support Mahen with their USDM. And or I also know that Igon is going to be adding in their own liquidity pair with IAG token and USDM as well. So awesome job, guys, helping support the Kadana ecosystem and our very own fiat backed stablecoin. Now, sometime this week, we will see MinSwap launch their stable swap on their decks. Now the stable swap is there so that users can swap between various stable coins. So if you have a Jed, for example, and you wanna swap it for uh, USDM, there'll be a pool there with a different mathematical formula behind it that will make the swap better for you, more capital efficient. It will be, won't be susceptible to price impact, uh, fees may be lower, and also there's be a far less impermanent loss on that pool. So if you were looking for a easier DeFi strategy, providing liquidity to a stable swap pool may be of interest to you. So please do your own research behind this and the math and the mechanics about how it all works. But when you're 
trading with a volatile asset such as min and then ADA, the permanent loss because of the price changes between those assets uh, can be quite big and holding onto the asset in the long run may be better. So we don't know really how the markets will play out, but um, permanent loss is a big thing in AMM DEXs. But with a stable swap where you're trading between two stable coins, uh, the assets should always be one to one uh, with the fiat back stable coin especially, but you're able to get the fees from everyone that is trading between those particular stable coin assets. So it's a nice way of uh, earning some protocol fees uh, for holding on to some stable assets. So look into that one. Um, I'll be playing around with it myself as well. Uh, this article here that the MinSwap team did put out about their uh, initial pool strategy below you can see here it is quite a long read. Um, you can scroll through it. I'm just scrolling quickly here. I love these 3D graphs. It makes it uh, really easy to kind of visualize the information they're putting through. But there is a bit of math here. There is a lot of uh, detail in regards to how they're doing things. So read into that. <laughs> it's a, definitely a lot of bedtime reading there. The other decks I like to mention here is Genius Yield and on their test net, they have multi-fills now available. So what is multi-filled market order? We've updated our market order functionality so that we are able to find and fill multiple orders simultaneously, as opposed to filling only the best available order. So this opens up more liquidity for the users that are doing swaps on the decks. So before with Genius Yield, it's basically a one-to-one -one match. So if you're trying to sell ADA here, it will try and find a match that is very close to it, match you up, might be a little bit of uh, price impact there, but you still get your trade through. But it's basically like 100 ADA, 100 ADA filled. Now, if there's multiple orders that are trying to buy and you're trying to sell at the point, if they're all very close, but this is like a 300 ADA and these are lots of like 10 or 20 ADA, they can match them all up together now so that you have more liquidity available to you so you can swap all those all in one, one go. So that's that's the idea and premise behind it. Um, I believe the Muesli swap team already have something like that uh, implemented on their decks and been running that for quite a long time, I think uh, about two years already. So now Genius Yield are catching up with that and doing their multi-fills as well, so that uh, more liquidity is open up for all these particular swaps. So really good to see that the Genius Yield team are doing that as well. You can play around with it on their test net and see how it all works. Uh, you can uh, team up with someone, put in some buy and sell orders and uh, see exactly how that's all coming into play. Now they've added in a caching layer here to mitigate contentions of UTXOs and the cache will also ensure that the order book does not represent orders that are in in that are actually being processed at the moment and have not yet been filled. So uh, it's nice to know that from a user's point of view, they have thought about all those aspects too. Now I thought this news story was quite interesting and this is the SEC pursuing legal campaign to classify Ethereum as a security. Now, the whole ecosystem should be quite alarmed by this because a lot of the altcoins out there, I, I don't like calling Cardano an altcoin, but that classification does stick. The lot of the altcoins out there could also fall under the scrutiny of the SEC and be classed as a security if Ethereum also falls under that, cat uh, that categorization. Now, I remember speaking to someone over Twitter about a year and a half ago uh, saying, oh, IOG aren't fulfilling their promises with scalability, um, all these other aspects of scalability, interoperability and all that. What, whatever happened to that? And why are they pursuing so hard this governance side of things? Why are they skipping you know, the third and fourth era and going straight to era five of governance? This is why. If the blockchain is completely decentralized, governed by the people and operated by the operators, uh, coded by the community, there's no one to chase. It's a decentralized ecosystem with no, no legal entity to, to sue or pursue. So this makes the priority of SIP 1694, the governance side of things, much more appealing and um, I am so so uh, thankful that that initiative was pushed 
earlier on. I, I could see it happening. I saw other aspects, other legal cases appearing, and I knew that uh, the decentralization aspects of this need to be pushed forward more, more and more to the forefront. Uh, so really good to see. If you aren't a part of Cardano's governance era yet, please, please um, step up. Uh, check and look into DREPs and also look at these Project Catalyst workshops that are coming up as well. There's going to be a lot of them around the world. I've sat in a few of these meetings uh, recently and uh, there's quite a few of these Project Catalyst workshops to attend. There's going to be one in Australia in about the end of May. Fingers crossed we get um, all the bookings right, but you'll be able to attend that, understand how Project Catalyst works um, and uh, participate in its future as well. So lots of really cool things coming up. Governance is the big thing, a big, bigger thing that we all need to do at the moment. Now, Ncoins is a project that I, I, I follow closely. I, I've followed them all since they were a Cardano mixer, like way back in uh, 2021. Uh, but they've really upped the level of technicality of everything and they're doing a ZKP. But check this out here. So ZKP enables trustless fiat on ramp for Cardano. So this is pretty exciting. You can go through the here, you can see their uh, roadmap to get this up and running. So by the end of this year, we'll see a complete MVP to move uh, fiat onto the Cardano ecosystem uh, in a completely uh, anonymous way. So that, that's really, really exciting. We, we had hints of this, uh, I think late last year, and there was a couple of tweets about it, but uh, it looks like the roadmap, something solid to follow through now. So if you wanna check this one out, I'll put links to the uh, article down here so you can read it and find out a little bit more how this is all going to work. Now, Fluid Tokens, I did mention Fluid Tokens a little bit earlier with the Smart Places Protocol partnership, but they, if you miss this one, are going cross-chain. They've always had cross-chain on their roadmap. They've implemented a version on Milkometer and have spoken on many spaces about going cross-chain. But this one took me totally by surprise. They're going cross-chain to Bitcoin. And it kind of makes sense now that I think about it. They've they spent so much time and effort working on the Kadana ecosystem with the UTXO model. And Developing with that idea and concept is harder. It's not as easy as it would be to do in an account-based model. Uh, the thinking's quite different. But now having this flexibility of all those learnings that they did in the Kadana ecosystem, they can now implement it on another marketplace, another ecosystem where the ordinals are booming and the, the tech behind it, from what I understand through reading through these threads, is well, well behind what Cardano is doing. So taking this uh, tech that they've built on the Cardano ecosystem, moving over to Bitcoin ecosystem and to create a permissionless versus that non-permissionless uh, version of being able to uh, borrow and lend uh, NFTs on Bitcoin, absolutely amazing. Great stuff. We're going to see a lot more of this coming out in the next few uh, few weeks uh, as they launch this and it goes through the ecosystem. Um, I, they did have a dev version up and running and I was playing around with it, but it seems to be down at the moment. So they must be doing updates before uh, they launch. But um, I just thought I'd point out this little tweet here. You guys are insane. Yeah, there's so many typos in tweets. Okay, you guys are insane. Will you be integrating FLDT, the fluid token, token, uh, in at some point? Yes, amazing. So if you're a fluid token holder, if you were part of the LBE earlier this year, that token's going cross chain. Great, amazing. You didn't see my reaction, amazing. Um, can't wait to see what the guys come up with there and how that's going to work. How is the FLD token going to work on the Bitcoin ecosystem? Don't know, don't know. Maybe you have to use it. Maybe it's a cross-chain thing within the DAP. I don't know. We'll find out. We'll definitely find out in a couple of days, only two, two more days before this launches. Um, and this was posted early this morning for me. So um, yeah, two more days. I think Friday, Friday my time. Now, since we're on the topic of Bitcoin, I thought this was quite interesting and, and worthy of a highlight. Aneta BTC, the bridge between Bitcoin and Cardano. Large transfer alert, 7.71 BTC bridged over to Cardano. So some of these Bitcoin OGs, 
obviously are catching wind of what's happening in the Cardano space at the moment and moving liquidity over. Now, I absolutely love this. One of the things that Cardano lacks is that liquidity, that inflow of new money coming into the ecosystem. We have a lot of uh, ADA being given out in the treasury from Project Catalyst and projects can fund themselves. That's great, they can build really cool things. But we aren't seeing a lot of liquidity and new money coming into the ecosystem. And this, these bridges is definitely one of those ways that new money can come in coming in from different ecosystems such as Bitcoin, Ethereum, whatever it is, but they are coming over to Cardano and bringing in that TVL and fresh new liquidity over. So really good to see. Awesome work in Netta BTC on continuously building out the bridge. I know there's a new version coming out as well soon with uh, some new upgrades to make it more and more decentralized that was always a part of their roadmap. Now, a couple of updates from Igon here. This first one, decentralized compute is on the horizon. That's really exciting. So one of their things is the whole decentralized storage that they have that's up and running. A lot of people are using it. It's really cheap storage. Absolutely amazing. This next one here is a decentralized compute. So you can rent out and provide CPU power or GPU power on their platform as well. So really good to hear that the movements are being made with that. Uh, I think NewNet are going to have a little bit of competition here now. So uh, they have to get their platform up and running and a lot faster or else I, Igon here are going to take over for sure. So uh, exciting stuff to see. The other news update that they have is around the new listing on BitGet Global. So this is another centralized exchange listing that is uh, holding a Cardano token. Now, from what I understand, I don't think there are any other Cardano native tokens that are listed on uh, BitGet. So this, this, I thought th this is really interesting because it would mean that BitGet would have to do extra development to get Cardano native assets on there, or it's either bridged over to uh, ERC-20 and then done that way. So really interesting to see what's happening here. If they are listing a Cardano native token and I can uh, push uh, an ADA asset over to BitGet, that's really exciting because it means that this exchange here has put in the time and effort to actually invest into supporting Cardano tokens. So if that's the case, absolutely brilliant. Because this announcement here from Igon saying that, yeah, they're gonna be listed on BitGet is more than just Igon. It's an open doorway for other Cardano native tokens to actually list on another centralized exchange. So I think there's only three other exchanges. I can't remember their names all off the top of my head. I know MX is one of them. Uh, but if the BitGet is also listing assets, great. That's at least four exchanges that can list Cardano native tokens. Really good announcement there. Now, if you're in Australia, this is coming up really soon. This is a meetup that's happening in Sydney uh, on the 2nd, I think. So it's right after Easter. So it's going to be a little bit hard for a few people to get to, but it's on April the 2nd, 6.30 p.m. to 9 p.m. Blockchain Sydney is presenting Cardano and we have uh, some really good presenters here from the Cardano ecosystem. We have Mark from Self Driven doing uh, Cardano current status overview, including uh, DGov Intersect member based organization. We have Alex from Mint talking stables and interchain op interoperability, and Micah from Butane talking about Butane and Aiken development on the Cardano ecosystem. So, uh, definitely something to attend if you can. Um, I unfortunately can't make it there. It's a little bit too tight to that Easter break. We've got school holidays on at the moment as well. So it's just a little bit all too hard. Uh, but, um, you know, this is definitely something that that's worth going to, especially if you're in the Sydney area. Get, get your asses over to uh, the Cheers Bar. That's uh, the same location as the last Cardano meetup there. Cheers Bar 561 George Street, Sydney. I'll put the links to this meetup all in the show notes down below. Now the last news update story, the last news one that I have here is this viral video that's been going around of Cardano Girls. Let me just play it for you. We're Cardano Girls, of course we're real. <laughs> we're Cardano Girls, of course we treat ourselves with the money we save on gas. It's girl math. We're Cardano Girls, of course we have Charles as our phone wallpaper. We're Cardano Girls, of course we get random NFTs sent to our wallet as gifts all the time. Thanks, boys. We're Cardano girls. We buy Ada while the men create all the drama. They keep fighting my fucking bags, bro. I don't know why they keep We're Cardano girls. I know we don't want to see your snack. <laughs> we are Cardano girls. Of course we are cute and smart. And no, 
We don't have all the gas. We're kind of girls. We won't go on top. Our inputs are exhausted. Fuck. We're Cardano girls. Of course we sell our husband's tools for more ADA. We're Cardano girls. Of course we're Husky billionaires. <laughs> we're Cardano girls. Of course we've got good mental health. We're Cardano girls. Of course we require proof of stake. We're Cardano girls. Of course we immediately get 10 followers every time we enter a space. We're Cardano girls. Of course we consider a wallet sync the perfect time for a coffee break. We're Cardano girls. Of course we grow our own weed. We're Cardano girls. Of course. <laughs> We're Cardano girls. Yes, we simp Charles Hoskinson, AKA Cattle Daddy. And we want to take him for a ride. I think I'll leave it there, but you get the get the point. It's it's quite hilarious, and the the thing I'd like to bring up from this is I love the marketing angle here. So, how many people have liked this post? Over three thousand, and a lot of people have bookmarked this, and uh, lots of retweets, lots and lots of comments. This is a type of uh, marking that you see in other ecosystems such as Solana, Ethereum, whatever it might be. And we do need more marketing like this to gain attraction towards the Canada blockchain. We've got that serious research-based kind of uh, appeal to a lot of people, but there's a lot of DJs out there that we can attract to the chain as well. And this is definitely one way of doing it. If you are interested, there is a little rumblings for Project Catalyst Fund 12, where there may be some more marketing ideas like this uh, that could potentially be funded. So if you do have ideas like this, if you have a track record, if you are a good film producer, uh, you may be able to get funding because there's interest of getting funding uh, projects like this funded. Uh, so do look into Project Catalyst for funding for it. Um, I think the next fund will start at the end of April. So you have exactly one month from the time that I'm reporting right now to come up with your proposals, get them into the ecosystem, form teams, whatever you need to do to get uh, these this type of marketing up and ready, uh, especially around that Bitcoin halvening. So that's all I have for this particular news update. If you liked any of the content here, please consider giving it a thumbs up, hit that like button, subscribe, notification bell, helps with the channel, helps with the reach of this video. Leave a comment down below of what you think about all these news stories as well. There's a, a lot that I covered just then. And also check out all these other videos that I've done recent interviews from all these various projects and to other ecosystem updates. I'll see you in the next video. Yeah, yeah, gotta do it like that. You've been listening to the Learn Cardano podcast.